she had gone out for a drink with work colleagues, which at first seemed reasonable. But when I called home around 10.30 p.m. and she still hadn't returned, it struck me as odd. In addition, there have been three cases in the last month when I picked up the phone and the caller abruptly hung up. Although this is not a serious cause for concern, it was unusual considering that this had happened only once in the entire previous year. Yes, my suspicions were getting stronger and stronger, prompting me to take action. For the next two weeks, Kate probably felt like she was living with a man who couldn't talk. I refrained from secular idol and unnecessary conversations. Instead of asking her to pass the salt, I just got up and took it myself. When she asked about the weather, I handed her a newspaper strip with the weather. If she asked me to cook dinner for the evening, I answered with a simple okay. When she said goodbye and left for work, I smiled and waved to her. It turned into a kind of game, every day I had to say just a few words to her. Kate knew about my anger and pain, and she knew the reasons for them. At first, she didn't really care, but over time she began to make amends. She didn't apologize, as it was a rarity in her family, but she became noticeably more affectionate. Morning kisses greeted me in bed, on the way to work, when we returned home, before going to bed, and sometimes in between. When I was reading the newspaper and sipping coffee, she leaned over and hugged me. While watching TV, I was thinking about what to do, talk or pat her on the shoulder. This was unusual because, despite the fact that my anger was gradually subsiding, because it is impossible to remain furious for several days in a row, I preferred to remain silent as much as possible. Before I uttered a word, I wondered about its necessity, and as a rule, came to the conclusion that there was no need for it. I focused on listening, observing, and keeping my thoughts to myself. About ten days after our quarrel, Kate suggested that we engage in an intimate relationship. I couldn't figure out if she really wanted it or if it was just a means of reconciliation with me. After dinner, she told a few stories about work, and I hardly spoke for six minutes. Suddenly, she stood up and grabbed my hand, urging me to leave the dishes, smiling warmly. She said, Come on, Steve, I need something else right now. As she led me back to the bedroom, I wondered if our distance had increased because of my silence or if my silence was the result of our growing apart. Needless to say, I hadn't said a word in all this time, and as we smoothly, naturally, and intimately connected, a sense of familiarity seized us. I chose to remain completely silent, which looked unnatural and created a sense of distance between us. I doubted that Kate really wanted this, but after our argument, I decided to keep silent. When we were done, I moved away from her, and she snuggled up to me, making a satisfied sound. We lay there for a while without saying a word. I didn't know how this experience affected her, but for me, it seemed cold and devoid of emotions. I couldn't tell if it was caused by the silence itself or the increasing distance between us. As the days passed during which Kate remained silent, frustration grew in me. Can't you say anything? She shouted one day during dinner. Don't you have anything to say to me? After thinking a little, I answered, I assumed you didn't want that. But Kate's answer caught me off guard. Well, it's not like that. I need a husband who communicates with me, shares himself in his feelings. I didn't marry a department store mannequin. I couldn't help but laugh, appreciating her clever remark. Good phrase, Kate, I thought, but just last week you were complaining that I never stopped talking. Kate, I'm trying to figure out the situation, I said. Steve, your behavior of silence and isolation has crossed all boundaries, she replied with obvious anger. I watched her for a while before answering. My confusion was partly aimed at not provoking her and partly sincere. I honestly don't understand what you expect from me, Kate. At first, I talked too much, and now I'm talking too little. How can I know how to do the right thing? She stared at me with obvious anger. Please stop this behavior immediately, okay? Just be the person I married. I'm sorry, I said. What I said. You're not very talkative, she claimed. I was furious and impulsively threw these words at you again. I paused before answering. All right, Kate, but I confess your words made me think about whether I'm talking too much without considering if I really have something to say. I thought for a moment, then smiled at her. Oddly enough, it was all informative. She smiled warmly back at me, and it seemed her anger had dissipated. 
For a brief moment, I felt a connection between us that had been missing for the past few months. I wanted to discuss the topic of making love with Kate, not to start an argument, but to sincerely understand her point of view. Instead of answering my question, Kate abruptly left the table, leaving me at a loss. Throughout the evening, she treated me with indifference, which seemed unfair given my sincere attempts to understand her emotions. Despite the unpleasant ending to our conversation, I woke up the next morning with a glimmer of hope. Kate seemed to have retreated from her initial hostility. She expressed a desire for me to talk to her, and I thought that perhaps our relationship would return to a more affectionate and normal state. However, it turned out that Kate was focused primarily on ending our conversation, not continuing it. The cold look and sharp remarks she made during breakfast indicated that the icy atmosphere between us, at least from her point of view, had not thawed. As a result, over the next few days, we continued to communicate minimally with each other, reducing ourselves to the main issues. This seemed somewhat ironic to me since she had now become silent, either as a deliberate punishment or simply due to strong anger towards me. But after a few days, Kate's behavior changed dramatically. When she got home from work, she looked visibly upset and immediately went to the shower. During dinner, her thoughts seemed to be occupied with other things. She spoke very little and often lost the thread of conversation. It was noticeable that this was no longer a silent appeal caused by anger. She was clearly preoccupied with something. Despite my repeated inquiries about her well-being, she only casually mentioned work-related problems. Yet, I couldn't help but notice the hidden tension in her behavior. She avoided eye contact, leaving me wondering what was bothering her. Despite my confusion, I decided it was better to wait and see how the situation would develop. The next day, I got a call at work and was asked to come to Ernie Matazalo's office during my lunch break. He handed me an envelope and began to tell me about his results. Unfortunately, Steve, this confirms your suspicions. They don't even hide it. She goes to him by car in the afternoon, and I personally have repeatedly seen her do it while parking her car in the parking lot. He lives in an apartment on the second floor, there is a hill behind the apartment, and shooting with a telephoto lens was not difficult. After expressing my gratitude to him, I wrote out a check, shook his hand, and left. I have been a reliable employee throughout my career, but I never returned to work that day. Instead, I left a message saying I had the flu and went home. I looked at the photos, then carefully put them back in the envelope. The only unexpected element was the person involved in the shooting. Although Adam wasn't chosen as the best man, he was one of my groomsmen during my wedding to Kate. He had always found her extremely attractive. She often mentioned it when we met, but I never considered him a threat. Both then and now, he has always shown a great interest in women, and I can't remember a case when he was not accompanied by a girl. As they say, he was happy with what he had. I knew that the tears would come later, but at that moment, I felt a cold emptiness, reminding me of the last intimacy between Kate and me. Perhaps now I understood why. Perhaps I also understood why she suddenly decided that I was talking too much in bed. I sat by the window for a long time, thinking deeply about everything, lost in my thoughts. I took out the photos and looked at them again. Their appearance remained unchanged, the same as when I hid them. When Kate came home, she saw me sitting on the couch without any activity. Dear, hello, is everything all right? What is it? She asked, waiting for an answer. I was silent and only looked in her direction. My expression was devoid of any emotions. I was not particularly angry. Steve, is something bothering you? Why are you just sitting here? There was a note of worry and annoyance in her tone. Sensing that I was not at ease, Kate began to understand more and more that something was wrong. She must have sensed that there was a sense of anxiety in the air. Steve, what's the matter? Did something happen to you today? Are we back to the days of silence again? There was contempt in her words. I immediately straightened up. How long have you been dating him? I asked. Kate jumped back in surprise, instinctively pulling away. She sat down on the chair opposite me. What are you talking about? I remained silent. She looked at me, trying to decipher my intentions, but eventually gave up. Steve, what does all this mean? I'm not dating anyone. Where did this absurd question come from? 
her face turned ashen, and she had difficulty finding a place for her hands. In the end, she tightly wove them in her lap. The silence that accompanied my fixed gaze became unbearable for her. Could you explain to me, Steve, the reason for this accusation of infidelity? How dare you hint at such a thing? Perhaps your conscience is tormenting you in some way, she said, staring at me intently, hoping her last remark would strike a chord. I remained silent. Eventually, she reached her limit. While it's completely pointless, I'm going to change. With that, she headed for the bedroom. I held out the envelope, forcing her to stop and look at me. Without saying a word, I took out a photo from it and handed it to her. The picture showed Kate lying on Adam's bed. Kate glanced briefly at the photo but then let out a sigh and instinctively recoiled, as if from a poisonous snake. Terrified, she sank into her seat, her face turning crimson, unable to meet my gaze. She stuttered, Steve, this. Steve, it's not. Her sentence broke off and remained unfinished. Eventually, her eyes met mine, silently begging for understanding. How long? I asked again. She was sitting in a chair, hugging herself tightly and leaning back as far as possible. Her head was shaking in disbelief. Honey, I'm asking for an explanation, I said, waiting for her answer. The silence seemed to last forever. Unable to bear the silence any longer, she pleaded, Steve, please don't make me talk about this. Having made up my mind, I calmly said, I'm ending a relationship and headed to the bedroom to pack my things. In a desperate plea, she screamed, Wait, Steve, please wait. I'll explain everything, just don't leave me, please. Resigned, I returned to my seat, fixing my gaze on her. She looked at me pleadingly but couldn't maintain eye contact with my adamant expression. After a moment, she looked away. I waited patiently until she had the courage to look at me again. There were tears in her eyes. He told me that you were involved in this too, out of surprise. I almost exclaimed, what are you talking about? But I chose to remain silent, waving her to continue. Adam told me everything, she continued. I was furious with you at the time, and he was so convincing that I believed him. Kate, you have to tell me the whole story. A little over a month ago, she unexpectedly ran into Adam in the supermarket. They knew each other, they had a good relationship, and he constantly showed charm and friendliness, sometimes even flirted. During their meeting at the supermarket, Kate mentioned that I was currently on a business trip. In the late afternoon, Adam surprised her by coming to our house with a pizza and a bottle of wine. In a dispassionate manner, he offered Kate company during my absence. Their evening together was relaxed and friendly, but as the evening progressed, Adam's behavior changed. He began to show anxiety and unease. When Kate asked how he was behaving, he was upset to tell her that I was cheating on her. He did an amazing acting performance, looked as if reluctantly lowering his head low and avoiding eye contact with me. He further told me that a couple of weeks ago, you had a conversation during which you shared information about your relationship with another woman during business trips. He spoke convincingly about her appearance, about where you met, and how you praised her abilities in bed. Naturally, this news brought me to tears, and Adam comforted me by hugging me gently, stroking my back, and saying words of comfort. He expressed his disbelief that any man could betray such a beautiful and attractive woman like me. He expressed deep pity for my trouble and promised to make every effort to comfort me. Some time passed, and before I knew it, we were in the same bed. But only yesterday, I found out the truth. It was all a lie, an invention, I remained calm, showing no emotion. In the end, she continued, looking even more depressed than before, recounting the events. She said that they were in his apartment only to have an intimate relationship. At that moment, he looked at her with a smug grin and said, Imagine if it wasn't for Steve's affair with Julia, we would never have known what a wonderful couple we are. And she just stared at him, unable to answer. The first time he mentioned the name of your mistress, Joanna, this aroused my curiosity, and I began to ask him further about their relationship. To my surprise, he could not remember any details that he had shared with me earlier, neither her appearance nor how you met nor any other details. Disappointed, I could no longer restrain my emotions and demanded the truth. Did you really cheat on me? Instead of a sincere answer, he laughed. His laughter pierced right through me, causing my face to turn red with anger. 
He casually admitted that it was all an invention, a story invented in order to manipulate me. My anger intensified, and I quickly got out of bed and hurriedly dressed. During all this time, I constantly scolded him, expressing my complete disappointment and calling him a liar. I told him that he was lucky that I would never tell you about it since you would certainly get into a tough fight with him. He just leaned back in his chair with a smug smile, showing no signs of remorse or guilt for his actions. He humiliated me, Steve, and I'm amazed at my own stupidity. Suddenly, she was speechless. Tears were streaming down her face. She buried her head in her hands, and her body was shaking with sobs. I had a desire to comfort Kate, but it was overshadowed by a chilling emptiness. Was she really that naive? Is our love so lost that she is ready to believe even the most absurd statements? In addition, I felt a surge of anger towards Adam, with whom I had been friends for 15 years. I was silent while Kate was crying uncontrollably. After a few minutes, I decided to act. Kate looked at me with fear in her eyes as I reached into my purse, took out her mobile phone, and put it in my pocket. Then, I went into the bedroom and into the kitchen, disconnected the two landlines, and put them in my bag, securely closing the bag under my arm. I headed for the door. As I was getting ready to leave, I looked back at Kate and said to her, I'll be back soon. Stay where you are. Don't engage in conversations with anyone. My voice was quiet, but her expression reflected a mixture of fear and resignation as she nodded in understanding. During the car ride to Adams, I focused on regulating my breathing, trying to look calm and friendly. When Adam opened the door, his surprise and concern were obvious, but I quickly greeted him. Hi, buddy. Do you want to have a couple of beers? Maybe we could watch the Phillies play. Kate is in a meeting right now. I noticed him looking at me warily, however, he pretended to be friendly and replied, of course, come in. It's always nice to treat myself to someone else's beer. How are you, Steve? We settled down in his living room, where a game was being broadcast on TV, and a pleasant conversation ensued. I kept a light-hearted tone, letting Adam gradually relax, believing that this visit was accidental. But I remained ignorant of the truth. It took a long time, more than an hour, to turn the conversation to more intimate topics. I cautiously inquired about his romantic adventures, which caused a momentary nervousness in his eyes but my reassuringly smiling face reassured him. He told me the details of his romantic relationship with a girl from work, praised her wonderful physique. Taking advantage of the opportunity, I casually mentioned that in my student years, I had a girl who was prone to excessive conversations during intimate moments, it drove me crazy. Adam took the bait and expressed his understanding, saying, I perfectly understand what you're talking about. Personally, I prefer to focus on the act itself and leave the sweet notes for later or before it when we are in bed. He chuckled, clearly amused by his words. Then, with self-confidence, he continued, I've met a lot of girls who initially thought they needed affection and tenderness. After that, I revealed to them their true desire to play pranks with me. They liked it, and a smug grin appeared on their faces. Leaning closer, I asked Adam's opinion on this. In a state of shock, his eyes widened, and he froze for a moment. After a pause, I decided to take matters into my own hands. This is the plan, I announced. You will behave well and with restraint. He nodded in agreement, but his eyes were still full of apprehension. Smiling, I reminded him, you were my friend. I never expected to be able to trust a man who cheats on my wife and has an affair with her behind my back. Steve, seriously. Do you think it's that important? She's not just some random woman. I can't believe I ever considered you a friend. And now, you better start talking because I want to know all the details about your secret relationship with Kate. I've already talked to her, so don't even think about lying to me. I saw the fear in his wide open eyes, realizing the seriousness of the situation. Adam confirmed my agreement with a nod of his head and signaled me to start. As he told the story, it completely coincided with Kate's version. It turned out that Adam had always been attracted to her and had been flirting with her for several months at every intersection of their paths. During the period when he did not have a girlfriend, he accidentally ran into her in a supermarket, and he had a favorable opportunity. At first, he thought he could just lure her into a romantic relationship. 
but realizing that she would never betray my trust, he began to invent a story about my betrayal. This cunningly fueled her anger and self-pity, which allowed him to easily lure her into bed. After this incident, they met about five more times, all in his apartment. The first intimacy was not very pleasant, my friend, because she was deeply upset by her affair and eventually burst into tears. But the subsequent meetings were absolutely incredible. We were doing exactly what I described, and it was truly amazing. She completely immersed herself in this experience. Noticing the expression in my eyes, he abruptly stopped his enthusiastic praises. Meanwhile, I had already cut his hair very short, almost to the root, which led to a rather unusual appearance. I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction, imagining how he would desperately hide his embarrassment with hats in the near future. Is it over? I asked coldly. He hesitated for a bit and finally admitted, yes, it's over. She found out about it yesterday. I couldn't even remember the name of the girl I claimed you were dating, and she started interrogating me. Realizing that I had made it up, she became furious and ended the relationship. Suddenly, I felt a strong desire to get rid of this situation. Although I could have extracted more information from him, I felt that I was empty inside. Well, Adam, you've been doing things you shouldn't be doing, I said. I think it's time for us to quit, brother, I said in a cold tone. Although you may be tempted to take revenge, think about the fact that you will have to explain to everyone you know why these events happened. Maybe we can both agree not to involve the authorities. He just nodded, his gaze fixed on me, a mixture of humiliation and suppressed anger in his eyes. Before you go, do you want me to untie you? He asked. I smiled and replied, of course. I'll leave the door to the apartment ajar. With a little effort, you can be free within an hour or so. Without looking back, I confidently walked away. When I returned, I found Kate on the couch wrapped in a bathrobe with wet hair, after a recent shower. Fear and discontent were written on her face. After restoring the phone, scattered around the apartment, I settled in the chair opposite her. Our eyes met, but silence enveloped us. Eventually, she broke the silence and asked accusingly, What have you done? I calmly replied, Adam and I had a polite conversation. I refrain from physical violence, but I doubt that he will bother us again. She frowned and muttered, I almost wish you had resorted to violence against this disgusting man, but it's not worth it for you to face any consequences. She looked at me with a worried expression and said, Steve, can we forget about this? I can't believe my stupid actions. I was so stupid, but I love you, and I know you love me. Please find the strength in your heart to forgive me. I looked at her for a long time before answering, realizing that our lack of communication had become a pattern. I don't know, I finally admitted, and it was true. Tears welled up in her eyes. The next morning, Kate walked into the kitchen, and her face lit up when she noticed breakfast and coffee on the table. Wow, darling, how delicious everything is, she exclaimed with a smile. When she came up to kiss me, she stopped abruptly, noticing two large suitcases standing by the door. Steve, are you leaving? What is it? She asked, and tears welled up in her eyes. Part of me wanted to leave without saying a word, accepting the symmetry of silent withdrawal, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I handed her a cup of coffee and persuaded her to sit at the table opposite me. Kate, it's over, I confessed. I can't explain what went wrong and why, but it's over. Although we were wonderful together at the beginning, our love weakened at least a year ago. We began to show impatience and irritability towards each other. Our quarrels have become frequent, and moments of warmth and affection, it seems to me, are becoming more and more rare. Although your relationship with Adam is not the only reason for my decision to leave, there is no doubt that you are not naive enough to believe his false words. Instead of coming up to me and asking if everything was okay, if I was having an affair, you just took on Faith Adam's somewhat convincing story about my infidelity, and that was enough to enter into a physical relationship with him. And unfortunately, you kept doing it. You practically admitted that you liked the way he avoids you more than the way I handled the situation. The woman I married would never have behaved like that. It looks like you were almost ready to jump into someone else's bed, otherwise, it wouldn't have happened. I paused and gave her a chance to collect her thoughts while she silently cried, covering her face with her hands. When I finished speaking, she looked up at me pleadingly. 
I gave her the opportunity to speak out, to convince me that I was wrong, to explain how we can revive our love and affection, but she was silent and continued to look at me, tears streaming down her face. I headed for the door. Goodbye, Kate, I said, taking the suitcases and leaving. Our divorce went quickly but very violently. Kate was crying hysterically in the courtroom and begging me to change my mind. It was hard for me to look at her in this state, but I couldn't resume our relationship either. Two days after we divorced, the irreparable happened. Kate, being in an inadequate state, doused Adam's car with gasoline and set it on fire while Adam was inside. Fortunately, he managed to save himself, but Kate was arrested. It turned out that she was in a state of shock and she was prescribed treatment in a psychiatric clinic. I hope she will return to normal soon and continue to live happily. Story 2 Hello, my name is Luciano Rossetti, and I've been happily married to Lily for 15 years. Together, we have two wonderful teenage daughters who continue to shower me with their love. As a person, I have the qualities of an alpha male. I appreciate self-confidence and do not tolerate any nonsense. But when it comes to my relationship with Lily, I treat her with the utmost tenderness and respect, considering her an invaluable treasure in my life. I encourage and support her in her aspirations to take responsibility and seize opportunities, but there are certain limitations that I deem necessary. It's worth noting that my tall, impressive stature of 6 feet 3 inches is a genetic gift passed down to me from my father. I have an impressive physique, weighing 265 pounds of pure muscle. However, contrary to my appearance, I am truly a gentle giant if not provoked. Lily has been fortunate to see this side of me on several occasions when we encountered threatening individuals during our walks. Lily herself is a charming beauty with her graceful figure, long and attractive legs, a slim waist, and a cute face. It's not surprising that men can't help but admire her, and they often stare and flirt with her, which, of course, annoys me. I admit that one of my weaknesses is a tendency toward jealousy, and when it arises, it becomes difficult to manage despite my efforts over the years to control my anger. Now, let me tell you about two instances during our 15-year relationship when Lily witnessed my outbursts of jealousy. In both cases, while we were out walking, several persistent individuals insisted that Lily join them in dancing, despite her already declining their invitations. They rudely disregarded her refusal and forcibly pulled her from her chair thinking their intimidating demeanor would intimidate any resistance from me and allow them to take my wife without difficulty. They were sorely mistaken. During a pleasant conversation about our beloved daughters, I watched in shock as one man brazenly grabbed Lily's hand and forcefully pulled her from her cozy chair. Without hesitation, I intervened, swiftly dislocating his shoulder and escorting him back to our table, where he writhed in agony. Lily and I wasted no time leaving the scene. As I've mentioned, I do not tolerate disrespect toward myself from anyone, and my main challenge is managing my jealousy. Despite my growing suspicions, my love for Lily remained unchanged. However, numerous unusual occurrences began happening in our marriage, stirring my intuition. With the arrival of a new boss at work, Lily's wardrobe and appearance noticeably changed, and our intimate life suddenly improved. She began showing initiative that she had never displayed before text messages arriving late at night and increasingly frequent late-night meetings at work made me anxious, despite her plausible explanations. Deep down, I hoped my suspicions were unfounded, but after three long months, I received a folder with damning evidence. With a heavy heart, I began studying its contents, videos, audio recordings, photos. I then instructed my lawyer, Mac, to initiate divorce proceedings, ensuring completion by Wednesday afternoon. I devised a clever plan to catch them off guard during their evening walk on Thursday. Despite Lily's audacity, I couldn't help but marvel at her understanding of me, my sharp instincts, firm determination, and relentless actions. She had witnessed my drive for success when taking over the company and how ruthlessly I dealt with competitors. Currently, I own a controlling stake in a large trucking company, having earned the trust and admiration of truckers and foremen thanks to my honest attitude toward them. I'm confident they'll support me if needed. In my relationship with Lily, I spare no effort to provide her with everything she desires and treat her with the utmost respect. She recognizes and appreciates this, often boasting to her friends and relatives about my exceptional care and affection. Yet, lately, 
I can't shake the thought of why she would jeopardize everything for a fleeting affair with her boss. These questions constantly haunt me. Lily has consistently proven herself to be a devoted mother and caring spouse, which makes understanding the situation even more confusing. Our intimate life was bright and satisfying, but it probably lacked something important. Despite combining household chores and a stressful full-time job as an executive assistant at a local technology company, she unexpectedly started an extramarital affair, something I never thought she was capable of. Fast forward to Thursday, our scheduled date, where I've planned everything carefully. I turned to a contractor for help, who was supposed to assist me in ensuring that the folder would be transferred unnoticed at the right moment. Arriving earlier than the appointed time, I generously tipped the hostess, politely asking for a secluded table for the two of them. My resourceful wife remained in the dark, thinking that I had gone on a business trip. Listening to the audio recording, I caught a conversation in which she informed her boss that she was free on Thursday evening and ready to meet. He excitedly agreed and took care of all the arrangements for the meeting. The private detective agency provided me with software that was installed on Lily's phone, allowing me to access her text messages and emails. In addition, this program allowed me to record audio recordings and upload them to a secure server. On Monday, I saw his text message indicating the time when he would pick her up. When I read the message that he had booked a table in a restaurant and asked my future ex-wife to dress provocatively for his, I was overwhelmed by a wave of anger. The insolence of this man, who came to our house and took her away, further fueled my rage. Deciding to confront both of them, I developed a simple plan. I would patiently wait until they calmed down and had their first drinks, and only then would I appear. It was at this moment that my carefully rehearsed speech would begin, eventually leading to a restrained warning and an unexpected delivery of divorce documents. As my anger and thirst for revenge intensified, I felt them engulf me. Deep down, I knew that Lily's love for me and her children would keep her from wanting a divorce, but still, I couldn't ignore the fact that my actions would shatter her and irrevocably change her life. Despite this knowledge, at that moment, I didn't care. All I wanted was for her to suffer the same way she caused me to suffer. While some may advocate forgiveness and moving on, especially for the well-being of our children and our 15-year marriage, I realized that I could not accept this prospect. But it is important to note that I have certain tendencies toward jealousy, which manifest themselves in my image of an alpha male. It was simply unthinkable for me to accept the presence of another man next to my wife because I wanted her to be devoted exclusively to me. Despite my love for her, this understanding deeply touched me, as it meant that our relationship would change forever. In preparation for this difficult situation, I used surveillance systems and was waiting for the right moment to provide me with crucial information. This evening, Thursday, I received a signal indicating that the couple had taken their seats and were enjoying drinks. Walking towards them, I prepared for a confrontation. Getting out of the car, I entered the restaurant and exchanged a brief smile with the manager. Suppressing my anger, I took a deep breath and decided to carry out my plan. The couple was already sitting at the table, but I was struck by the sight of my wife in a revealing cocktail dress that accentuated her generous cleavage. This infuriated me, especially since she had never dressed so provocatively for me before. Confusion and frustration overwhelmed me as I tried to make sense of her actions. Why would she want to bring me to this state? It seemed that she was trying to impress her lover that evening, which only increased my disappointment. I cautiously approached their table without attracting their attention, as they were completely absorbed in each other's company. It was a touching sight, but it wasn't until I casually pulled a chair up to them from the next table that they finally realized I was here. Lily's expression defied description. There was a mixture of surprise, anxiety, and remorse in it, which I had never seen before. Her companion was completely unaware of the circumstances and did not understand that I was her husband. He just looked at me with annoyance on his face. Now the situation has begun, I thought. Hi, Lily. Are you having a good time on your date? I asked, smiling broadly. Oh, hello. What brings you here? I thought you wouldn't be here today, she replied. My boss Jeremy invited me to dinner to discuss some changes in the organization. Why don't you join us, she suggested in a serene and loving tone. She introduced Jeremy, this is my husband, Luciano. I couldn't help but admire her grace. She showed amazing self-control and agility. 
As soon as I approached the table, the drink I had ordered earlier was brought. Ignoring Lily's lying words, I confidently raised my glass for a toast. Instead of answering her question, I replied with a friendly smile and suggested, let's raise our glasses to an interesting evening and the prospects of new beginnings. After making a toast, I turned my attention to Lily's boss, Jeremy, smiling. Jeremy, can you guess the secret of our happy 15-year marriage with Lily? Trust and honesty in our relationship, I said directly. I asked Jeremy, are you married? Having already read the report, I knew everything about it. He confirmed, yes, I have been married for 20 years, and I have four wonderful children between the ages of 5 and 13. Luciano, I completely agree with your point of view that trust and honesty are vital in our marriage, Jeremy added. After expressing my satisfaction, I turned to Lily and asked the question, knowing that it could cause her discomfort. Do you share this opinion? I asked. Yes, my dear, this is certainly an important factor in our marriage, she replied confidently. She stated her consent after just mentioning their business dinner, so she had no reason to feel guilty or anxious. So, how long have you been together? I asked dispassionately, grinning broadly. Lily looked visibly worried, and I noticed a desperate attempt to regain control of herself in a defensive tone. Dear, let's remember that this is a business meeting, and your behavior puts my boss in an awkward position. Please try to restrain your jealousy. You know me well enough to know that I would never do anything inappropriate, she said. In response to Lily's words, her companion saw an opportunity to assert his superiority. Luciano, let me make it clear that this dinner is purely of a business nature. I needed to discuss some upcoming changes, which is why I met with Lily today. I apologize if there was any misunderstanding, my friend. I would never cross professional boundaries, especially with a married woman, Jeremy assured me. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're saying that you've never asked my wife out on a date, and this dinner is purely businesslike, is that so, Luciano, he assured me. You're absolutely right. There's nothing romantic between us, Jeremy confirmed. Looking for confirmation, I turned to Lily and asked, Lily, can you confirm that? Is it really just a business meeting and nothing ever happened between you? It was the moment that would determine our future, the choice between truth and deception. Deep down, I already knew what she would say even before she uttered a word. She answered confidently, Dear, I assure you, these meetings are strictly professional. I would never enter into a relationship with another man, especially with my boss. Please refrain from such immature behavior. I'm sorry, Jeremy, my husband is sometimes possessive, but he knows about my deep love for him. I humbly bowed my head, taking a submissive pose, and expressed my remorse. Please forgive me. I must admit that I can be jealous. It is quite understandable why I can feel such feelings when I see you in this seductive dress accompanied by this attractive man. Jeremy patted me affectionately on the back. I breathed a sigh of relief, pretending that I was mistaken. Luciano, there's no need to apologize. If my wife looked as gorgeous as yours and was on a date with a stranger, I can't say that I would also know how to react, Jeremy said. Having relieved the tension, I quietly invited the man who was watching us from the bar to come over. He approached our table and handed me a bulky folder, after which he quickly left. All eyes turned to him, and Lily and Jeremy exchanged curious glances. Getting ready to put down the first photo, I turned my gaze to Lily and uttered tender, sad words. Lily, it pains me to admit that once I loved you with all my soul and was ready to give you all my strength. Unfortunately, you chose to reject this love, not paying attention to the many years we spent together in marriage. The wounds you have inflicted on me are deep and the memories of those videos and the hurtful words you uttered to me on these recordings will haunt me forever. I have no choice but to bear this ordeal until the end of my days. For this, I express my gratitude to you. In an amazing photo, Lily and Jeremy were captured in a compromising pose. Then, in another picture, Jeremy wrapped Lily in an inappropriate hug. In addition, they were depicted in various candid poses and numerous photographs. From the shock, Lily could not restrain herself and gasped, quickly covering her mouth with her hands. Jeremy, on the contrary, was furious and demanded an explanation about the origin of these photos. In response, I calmly told him to be silent. 
After taking some time to analyze the photos, I carefully examine each of them, occasionally giving comments. Lily, you look incredibly adorable with this in your mouth, and Jeremy seems quite happy with this photo, as if you're enjoying my wife's company, I said. Lily's tears were streaming uncontrollably down her face. She begged me to stop. Realizing that the attention from other visitors was growing, I tried to lower my voice, not wanting to disturb the peace of the restaurant. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, Lily saw only one way out. I offer my deepest apologies, my love. Maybe we can get out of here and discuss what happened. Everything is not as it seems, she said. I looked at her with a hint of amusement on my face and asked the question, Are you going to go down this path, the way of deception? But let me cut in before you go on. It's important for both of you to understand that I have a huge collection of evidence, hours of videos, audio clips, text messages, emails, and photos. Lily, I must admit that after watching these videos, I was completely unaware of this side of you that is capable of such actions. You've never revealed this side of yourself to me, and it's very upsetting. Over the past three months, I have invested a lot of money in obtaining this information, and I want to assure you that it was obtained legally. Therefore, you can be sure that I am completely in control of the situation. Having carefully put the documents in a folder, I began to explain the purpose of my presence and the events that would take place tonight. Handing Lily the divorce papers, I said softly, Lily, our relationship has come to an end. The consequences of your affair with your boyfriend have caused irreparable damage to our marriage and my feelings for you. The pain you caused me is unlike anything I've ever experienced, and I've made the decision not to be with you anymore. I kindly ask you to sign this document tonight. My colleague at the bar is a notary who will be present at the signing. If you don't sign the document tonight, I will be forced to disclose all the video and audio recordings to your parents, our friends, and your children will find out what kind of mother you were throughout the divorce process. I behaved honestly, but it was quite reasonable that our daughters would live with me. I can't let my daughters live with a man who cheats and shows disrespect like you. Jeremy, my friend, I strongly advise you to convince your mistress to sign this document before I leave. I assure you, I will make sure that all the evidence is handed over to your wife and the higher management at your workplace. As soon as I'm done, your job will be in jeopardy, and I will try to convince your wife, Sarah, to end your relationship and provide you with significant financial difficulties for a significant period of time. I really hope that I will not be able to go down this path, so please try to convince her to sign the divorce papers. Once this is done, you can continue your relationship with my future ex-wife. I have no desire to contact her ever again. My words made a strong impression on her because the thought that she would lose her daughters was an additional blow for her. Tears were rolling down her cheeks, and panic was reflected on her boyfriend's face. Lily desperately begged me to stop and change my mind. She resorted to the usual cliches, offering typical excuses. Everything is not as it seems. Let me explain. I'll fix it. It was just a mistake. Please forgive me, she said with the last declaration of love. Luciano, I adore you, and I can't stand it. Give me another opportunity, she pleaded. Ignoring her entreaties, I got up from my seat and said, I'm going to the toilet, and when I come back, it's better to sign these documents. If you refuse, I assure you, you will not understand what chaos I will bring down on your lives. I left, leaving Lily in tears and her lover in disbelief. I knew that Jeremy would do his best to convince her to sign these papers and protect himself in my absence. Jeremy acted quickly, knowing full well that he could not risk his wife and work seeing these videos. He was determined to do everything possible to prevent the situation from developing. His goal was to convince Lily to put her signature on the divorce papers. Lily, I suggest you sign the papers for now and then ask him to hold them temporarily. This will give you the opportunity to talk to him and try to convince him of your love, promise to visit a therapist, and do everything possible for reconciliation. But ask him to wait a week, this will be fair, considering that you have been married for 15 years and made one mistake. This approach seems to us the best chance at the moment, since he seems to be really serious. In addition, if he has these videos and audio recordings, we can both have serious problems. I really don't want to get divorced, he exclaimed. Believe me, if you manage to make him wait, I'm sure you can save your marriage. Think about the kids, you don't want to lose them, right? 
Her eyes filled with tears again, and after a short pause, I returned to the table. So, have you already signed these documents? I asked. She looked at me with the saddest expression I've ever seen and replied, I'm asking you to give me a week of time before making any concrete conclusions. Could you consider allowing me to come home and give me this opportunity? After 15 years together, can I spend at least a week with our daughters and talk to them? Won't you give me that chance? I was silent, studying her pleading look and thinking about her request. In the end, I gave in and answered, even though you certainly deserve my anger for your actions and for the way you ruined our marriage for this man, I will give in and grant your request. You have the opportunity to return home, and I will give you a week's time before I hand over the necessary documents to my lawyer. During this period, you can stay in one of the guest bedrooms, but I ask you not to approach my personal sleeping places. Now, please go and sign the paper so that I can finish my business here. With a quick movement, she put her signature on the documents, and I carefully put them in the folder. Getting up from my seat and preparing to leave, I gently took her hand. A smile appeared on her face for a moment until she realized that I was taking off her wedding ring. I carefully removed the ring, the ring that symbolized our 15-year marriage. Taking the ring, I caught her eye and casually dropped it into her wine glass. The expression on her face gave me a feeling of satisfaction. When her tears started flowing again, a faint smile appeared on my lips. I realized that she was beginning to realize all the pain I had experienced. Turning to Jeremy, I said, Well, heartless man, she's all yours now. Do whatever you want with her. I'm leaving, but keep that in mind, Jeremy. You got into my life, causing irreparable damage to our marriage and jeopardizing a lot of things, even how our children perceive their mother. Your fate is in my hands and I can determine your future. Don't underestimate me. Consider yourself lucky that I decided not to fulfill my original intentions towards you. This is not the end of our acquaintance, despicable person. Expect to hear from me in the near future. Is everything clear? Jeremy silently confirmed my words as I loomed over him. I wonder if they will want to continue their little entertainment when I'm no longer around. When I started to leave, Lily clung tightly to my hand and begged, Luciano, can I walk you home? I just want to be with you, please. I instinctively pulled my hand away, reacting as if it had been burned, and answered sharply, forget about it. I have no desire to meet a person with such insignificant behavior. You're just his toy for today. I'll look at you when he's done using you. Today or tomorrow, it doesn't matter to me. You have a week. You disgust me and I feel deeply ashamed that I was once your husband. I admit I was acting like a jerk, but to be completely honest, I didn't care. I thought I was successfully restraining my jealousy and anger. I was proud of my ability to suppress all the rage that had accumulated inside me. I gave her a little time, a whole week. Now let's wait and see what happens. The next morning, I heard that she had returned home much later than usual. To her credit, she immediately headed to the guest room. Apparently, she realized that I was not in the mood for a calm conversation. The next morning, we met in the kitchen when I went downstairs to have a cup of coffee. Driven by a thirst for revenge, I maintained an impolite demeanor and casually remarked, Good morning, my dear wife. How is my unfaithful partner doing today? Her body reacted involuntarily. She visibly shuddered and lowered her eyes to the coffee. Then, in a desperate attempt to save our marriage, she uttered those banal words that all spouses who are caught cheating resort to, Honey, we need to talk. But I reassured her, Lily, there's no need to discuss this further. I am well aware of your actions. I am well aware of the duration of your infidelities. I know all the information you shared with him about our marriage and about me. I've personally seen you do things with him that you've never done with me. I've seen you dress spectacularly to get his attention. It became obvious to me that he has a higher level of suggestibility, as has been repeatedly stated in these videos. You deceived me, hid everything from me, betrayed my trust, and made me look stupid. I'm just amazed that you can be so naive. If I don't understand something, I'm ready to discuss it. But if not, then I have nothing to add. Who looks stupid in this situation is me, not you. I do not know why I allowed it. You gave me everything I wanted. No matter what you've heard in these videos, I love you unconditionally. 
It is important for me to understand that. I never wanted to hurt you and did not want you to find out the truth, she managed to say through tears. The problem is that you never wanted me to know, Lily. You wanted to hide it by continuing to cheat and entering into secret trysts with your lover behind my back. That's the real crux of the problem. Lily, I can forgive infidelity because we all, as human beings, tend to make mistakes. It wasn't an accident, you made a conscious decision to hide and deceive, continuing to lie and deceive, keeping this relationship a secret. Lily, I really love you. But as Tina Turner asks, what role does love play in this situation? My trust has been completely destroyed, and I'm starting to doubt that I ever really understood who you really are. How many other men were involved in this? How many times have you betrayed my trust by sleeping with your lover and returning to our bed? I am filled with complete disgust, to such an extent that it is difficult for me even to express my thoughts. The weight of my emotions is suffocating. Tears were streaming down her face, and she finally understood the depth of my emotions and the scale of her actions. All her excuses and justifications disappeared, only the recognition of her mistakes remained. I confess, and I am overwhelmed with a sense of self-blame. There was no one else, and I understand that no matter what I say, forgiveness for what I did may be unattainable. I desperately want to save our marriage. I am ready to do everything necessary to restore our relationship. I think therapy can help me, and maybe we can attend sessions together to solve my problems. Please don't leave me, she said after a short pause. I replied, Lily, it's completely understandable that you want to get advice to work on yourself, and I will support you every step of the way. But I can't be in a relationship with a person who easily rejects me. Your actions and words have revealed your true feelings, and I cannot imagine living with a person who feels such emotions for me. I know that there are other women who would be happy to have a relationship with me. You were given a chance, but unfortunately, it eluded you. Take advantage of this week to be with our daughters and find a way to clarify your decision to leave them. I will not criticize you, but it is very important that you honestly tell them about the reasons for your departure. Our divorce agreement gives you unlimited access to the girls whenever you wish, but mostly, they will live with me. If you continue to behave irresponsibly and have a negative influence on them, I will be forced to complicate your visits. Please understand that I will treat you with more kindness than you possibly deserve. I'm here to help you maintain a relationship with the girls, but I have two important questions that require thoughtful consideration before answering. First of all, why did you decide to put everything at risk for this? Secondly, was it really worth it? The following Monday, I contacted Jeremy and made an appointment for lunch on Wednesday. After he convinced me that the meeting was a wise decision, I expressed my disappointment to Jeremy about the damage he had done to my marriage and the serious consequences he had narrowly avoided. After that, I presented him with an alternative proposal during our conversation over lunch. I emphasized the consequences of his actions, in particular, that his relationship with a married woman had a negative impact on many people. I expressed the hope that he would take responsibility and correct the situation. As one of the options, I suggested that he take responsibility for paying for the rent of Lily's apartment and car for the next three years. I am firmly convinced that he should feel some discomfort in connection with his actions, and I have carefully explained how this plan will be implemented. I will provide him with the necessary payment details to set up automatic transfers and warn about what if something goes wrong, the punishment will be instant. Although I have decided to end my relationship with my unfaithful wife, I still care about her well-being and want her to be taken care of properly. Since he was the cause of this unfortunate circumstance, I consider it necessary that he fulfill my conditions. This agreement will help Lily get back on her feet after I remove her from my life. I don't care how they are fulfilled, but failure to fulfill the conditions will lead to serious consequences, including the loss of his job and the disclosure of his infidelity to his wife, Sarah. As an additional incentive, his life will be spared. All this is a direct consequence of his decision to have an affair with a married woman. People like them need to understand that their behavior has consequences. Instead of hurting families, why not look for relationships with single women? Jeremy's actions were truly shameful. I tried to treat Lily fairly, allowing her to spend time with the children and keep them in touch, but my respect and trust in her have never been restored. Jeremy continued to make monthly payments regularly, always mindful of the consequences that I had clearly outlined. 
Lily had difficulty giving satisfactory justifications for her actions. She admitted that her actions related to treason and lies did not bring her any real benefit and felt remorse for the decisions she made. But she could not determine the exact reasons for her behavior. Currently, she lives alone, deprived of a partner in the affection she once enjoyed. Although I could have completely destroyed her, seeing her lose her family and my love was, in itself, retribution. Despite the fact that she sought help from psychologists, the question of the reasons for her actions remained unanswered. The closest answer she could give was a simple one, I can't explain how it happened. The problem had nothing to do with you or our marriage because I really loved you and found satisfaction in our intimate life and the life we built together. It was an irresistible attraction, something different and exciting. I made the mistake of not being able to resist his attraction. Lily, if you were really happy, why did you dress provocatively and wear seductive outfits for him? Why did you do things with him that you never did with me? Perhaps if you had put so much effort into our relationship, we would not have found ourselves in such a difficult situation. It just so happened is not a genuine explanation. You constantly behaved in this way deliberately, dressing to attract his attention every time. At the same time, you confess your love for me. I hope that one day you will be able to give me a sincere and honest explanation of your actions. I think we all deserve to hear the truth in order to understand it and move on. A whole year has passed since the divorce. I've been unable to recover from Lily's betrayal and infidelity. All this year, my daughters found it difficult to bear the truth that their mother told them. As for Lily herself, she is even worse. Going through our divorce sessions with a psychologist didn't help her, and still, nothing helps her to drown out loneliness and pain. She resorted to heavy alcohol consumption. I saw her lying on the ground several times in a terribly drunk state. I had to pick her up and take her to her house. I hope her alcoholism will pass soon. Thank you.